भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती ठाकुर शिल्ला प्रभु पाद की जय अनंत कोटि वैष्णव वृंद की जय नामाचार्य शिल्ला हरिदास ठाकुर कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत धर शिवासादि गोर भक्त वृंद की जय श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गोप गोपीनाथ श्याम कुंड राधा कुंड गृगोवर्धन की जय श्री वृंदावन धाम की जय श्री पूर्णवदीप धाम की जय जगन्नाथपुरी धाम की जय गंगा माई की जय जमुना माई की जय तुलसी देवी की जय भक्ति देवी की जय युग धर्म संकीर्तन यज्ञ की जय ग्रंथ राशि मत भागवतम की जय समवेत भक्त वृंद की जय और प्रेमानंद और ग्लोरीज टू द सिंबल दिवोटीज और ग्लोरीज टू द सिंबल दिवोटीज Oh glories to the symbol devotees oh glories oh glories to shri guru and shri gauranga oh glories to his divine grace shila prabhupad ki jai my apologies to all the vaishnava devotees of the lord available here I'm not a great speaker, but somehow or other, by Krishna's mercy, I'm sitting here. So, if there is any mistake or anything I've said, please correct me, and give me your blessing that I can speak better. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya uh, Reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 9, Chapter 4, Verse 26 Sa Itham Bhakti Yogena तपायुक्तेन प्रार्थिव स्वधर्मेन हरि प्रीणन सर्वान् कामान् शनै जहौ 
ಸಾಯಿ ತಂ ಭಕ್ತಿಯೋಗೇನ ತಪೋಯುಕ್ತಿ ನ ಪಾರ್ಥಿವ ಸ್ವಧರ್ಮೇಣ ಹರಿ ಪ್ರೀಣನ್ ಸರ್ವಾನ್ ಕಾಮನ್ ಶನೈರ್ಜಹೋ ಸಹಿ ತಂ ಭಕ್ತಿಯೋಗೇನ ತಪೋಯುಕ್ತಿ ನ ಪಾರ್ಥಿವ ಸ್ವಧರ್ಮೇಣ ಹರಿ ಪ್ರೀಣನ್ ಸರ್ವನ್ ಕಾಮನ್ ಶನೈರ್ಜಹೋ ಸಹಿತ ಭಕ್ತಿಯೋಗೇನ ತಪೋಯುಕ್ತಿ ನ ಪಾರ್ಥಿವ ಸ್ವಧರ್ಮೇನ ಹರಿ ಪ್ರೀಣನ್ ಸರ್ವನ್ ಕಾಮನ್ ಶನೈರ್ಜಹೋ ಹೀ ಮಹಾರಾಜ ಅಂಬರೀಷ್ ಇಥಂ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ವೇ ಭಕ್ತಿಯೋಗೇನ ಬೈ ಪರ್ಫಾರ್ಮಿಂಗ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸೆಂಡೆಂಟಲ್ ಲವಿಂಗ್ ಸರ್ವಿಸ್ ಟು ದ ಲೋಡ್ ತಪಯುಕ್ತೇನ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಸೈಮಲ್ಟೇನಿಯಸ್ಲಿ ದ ಬೆಸ್ಟ್ ಪ್ರಾಸೆಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಸ್ಟಾರಿಟಿ ಪಾರ್ಥಿವ ದ ಕಿಂಗ್ ಸ್ವಧರ್ಮೇಣ ಬೈ ಹೀಸ್ ಕಾನ್ಸ್ಟಿಟ್ಯೂಷನಲ್ ಆಕ್ಟಿವಿಟೀಸ್ ಹರಿ ಅಂಟು ದ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಲೋಡ್ ಫ್ರೀ ನನ್ ಸ್ಯಾಟಿಸ್ಫೈಂಗ್ ಸರ್ವನ್ ಆಲ್ ವರೈಟೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಾಮನ್ material desires shane gradually jaho gave up 
translation and purport by His Divine Grace, Jagat Guru Srila Prabhupada Ki. The king of this planet, Maharaj Ambrish, thus performed devotional service to the Lord and in this endeavor practiced severe austerity, always satisfying Supreme Personality of Godhead by his constitutional activities. He gradually gave up all material desires. Severe, auster purpose, severe austerities in the practice of devotional service are many varieties. For example, in worshiping the deities in the temple, there are certainly laborious activities. Sri Vigrahar Aradhana Nityanana Shingaratana Mandir Marjanado. One must decorate the deities, cleanse the temple, br bring the water from the Ganges and Yamuna. Continue the routine work, performing arti many times, prepare first-class food for the deities, prepare dresses and so on. In this way, one must constantly be engaged in various activities and hard labor involved, in, involved is certainly an austerity. Similarly, the hard labor involved in preaching, preparing literature, reaching the atheistic man to become men and to distributing and distributing literature door to door is of course an austerity tapo yuktena tapo divyam putraka such austerity is necessary in a satvam shuddhayet by such austerity in devotional service one is purified of material existence kaman shanair jaho indeed such austerity leads one to the constitutional position of devotional service. In this way, one can give up material desires, and as soon as one is freed from material desires, he is free from the repetition of birth and death, old age, disease, and disease. Om Ajnanati Mirandasya Gananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun militam mena tasmai shri guru namaha nama om vishnu padaya krishna prasthaya bhutale shri mate bhakti vedanta swami niti namine namaste saraswate deve gauravani pracharine nirvishesha shunyavadi paschatya deshatarine one day, Shri Guru, Shri Yuta Padakamalam, Shri Guru Vaishnavam Cha, Shri Rupam Sagrajatam, Sagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajeev, Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam, Shri Krishna Chaitanya Devam, Shri Radha Krishna Padan, Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitam Cha Mukham Karoti Vachalam Pangulangate Giram Yat Kripatam Maham Vande Shri Guru Dinatarinam Vanchakalpat Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhyevacha Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Namo Namaha Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Shiva Sadi Gora Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare can see it. Translation, one sec. The king of this planet, Maharaj Amrish, thus performed devotional service to the Lord and in this endeavor practiced severe austerity, always satisfying the Supreme Personality of Godhead by his constitutional 
activities, he gradually gave up all material desires. So, it's mentioned here that Maharaj Ambrish engaged in his constitutional activities. One can say constitutional activities as Maharaj, he had to take care of the praja and all that, but besides that, our real constitutional activities is in the service of the Lord. And by engaging ourselves in the service of the Lord, that is the greatest austerity we can make. So it is very important that all of us should be engaging in all kinds of devotional service. We are spending more time in service, of performing great austerities for what? For this matter, for this body which is temporary and it will be finished pretty soon. We have put out of 24 hours, we put 22 hours and we do not have sometimes even two hours to chant nice, attentive japa. We do our service. Many devotees have performed austerities like going deity worship, doing deity worship, book distribution, but our consciousness also has to be there. It's not a laborious activities that we have to do. It's a loving austerity, just like the mother may do it for the child. It's an austerity for the child, but it has to be loving. It's not just a matter of we do our devotional service, we are doing, practicing, that is wonderful. Maybe one day we will develop that loving sentiments for the Lord. Right now we have so many loving sentiments for other things also, family members, children, so many things. But here it is mentioned in purport by Srila Prabhupada that Maharaj Amris gradually gave up all his material desires. That means he gave up completely. So by engaging in devotional service, we have to come to that position. Until if we, come, we do not come to that position, that means we have not developed any loving sentiments, nor we had a faith in the process. But that faith has to be awakened because we are doing loving exchange with Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is providing us with everything. We may think we are taking care of our children, our family members, but it's an illusion. We are not doing anything for anybody. Everything everybody is getting according to one's karma. Nothing we are able to do for anybody. Only the illusion that we have taken is that this is my responsibility, this is my property, this is this, and we are struggling hard with the six senses to maintain all those relationships with the material. We do re maintain relationship, but our relationship be, should be based only on our constitutional position, which is Jivera Swarupohoi Krishna Nitya Das. So we are meant to give Krishna and take Krishna and give Krishna to family members. This is our relation, this should be our relationship, and we should put all our effort in that relationship. Otherwise, we are also binding ourselves with karma and not only binding ourselves, we are, they are bound by the karma also. And this way the cycle, we can never get out of the cycle. Of, but we are, have a great fortune, we have come in a great Vaishnava line that Prabhupada Vaishnava, Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya and we have been awakened by Krishna, little bit of Krishna consciousness by the mercy of His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. So we should take full advantage of this, engage ourselves in our constitutional position, engage ourselves in the deity worship, cleaning the temple, book distribution, as Prabhupada has mentioned in this purport. And it is the first class service for everybody. It, and this is the first class austerity for everybody. We don't have to do other austerities. 
but somehow or other we are entangled with this another type of material and even that and Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita that you may do your karma, you may do your activities of working job and all that, but use the result in service of Krishna. Use the service. As much as you use, that much you are free, becoming free from karma. Whatever you keep, Krishna is seeing that also. What you are giving and what you are keeping. Mostly he sees what you are keeping. So we have to be selfless and give everything according to our means to Krishna. So if anybody wants to add something to this or some critic or questions. Any questions or any comments? It is not that severe, but since we are neophyte, it is severe. We feel it severe, but it is not. It is joyfully done, just like the mother who is raising the kid. It may be very severe for the person who is not taken care, but the mother is very good. So that's how we have to see this devotional service, because it's our natural constitutional position. Well, in the beginning, one has to perform some austerity. To, since we are so much conditioned, life after life, many lives, so, and it, according to the modes we have taken the birth, it will be austerity and severe austerities, according to the modes. So, somebody in the mode of goodness will not feel that much austerity, but mode in passion, they will, it will be a, their mode is different. So, in mode of goodness and mode of passion will be different. But still, we see, as long as we are in the mo under the mo control of the modes, we're gonna be feeling some severity and sometimes freedom. Can somebody else ask questions? She has a question. It says. Thank you for a nice lecture. You just mentioned in your lecture that we are thinking we are taking care of our family members, but actually we are in illusion. Actually, we are not doing it. That means Krishna is doing it. Yes. Sure. Since Krishna is taking care of everything, that means we no need to take care of anything. Just perform our service. Yes. That you meant like that? Yes. What you can do for your ch kid or family. But sometimes maybe there is a conflict. I need to take care of my son, maybe cook for him or doing something for him. But I also have to do some services in the temple. That time, no need for me to take care of my son and I can just go ahead to do my service. Yes, since you have brought him according to his karma and your karma, so you may have to take, but you are just an instrument in the hands of Krishna. Not a blade of grass moves without sanction of Krishna. And you cannot maintain also your child because without the air you cannot take care of your kid. You may give him the bodily attention, 
but still even that you cannot do it. It's your illusion that you are taking care. Prakrate kriya manani gune karmani sarvasa ahankara vimudatma kartaham miti manyate. Everything is done by the nature and Lord Krishna's sanction, and we think that I'm the doer. Is that okay? All right? <coughs> Later. About the, about the kids and service, I think the mother can see that this first, her first service is to take care of the, child, the children when they are small. Prabhupada said, leave deity worship, you have, de you have your own deity at home, it's your baby. Of course, if the child is 18 years old, it can be at home, I can be doing my service at in the temple. But if the child is 13, 12, 11, maybe I'm in the temple thinking that I'm doing service to Krishna, and in reality I'm neglecting my own child, that has no food, no protection. So we need to balance and see what is real service? It means our consciousness. I can do anything to service to Krishna, to serve Him, and maybe it is not only be in the temple. And I can be in the temple and be with not a good consciousness. But our service as mothers, I think that must to be must come first to give us a good example and to inspire our own kids. I think they cannot feel neglected because of Krishna. What kind of message are we giving to them? My mother is 12 hours in the temple. I have no food at home or I have no one to play with. And what Krishna is thinking about this? But you are forgetting your main service to your kid. One should not become a mother or father unless you can make the kid your a, a Krishna conscious and deliver them from the cycle of birth and the feeding, that is all right. Feeding, clothing, that you should take care. But if you do not, if you neglect the main service to the child, you are not doing any good service to him. We are saying the same things. Yes. We need to take care of them. Yes, you take, you are, all you can do is feeding, feeding for the body, feeding, but main service is to take care of their Krishna consciousness. Take care of their Krishna consciousness. Yes. For that I need to be with them. Yes, you can. If you, are, as much as you are Krishna conscious, you will be able to give them. Otherwise you will not be. You are just doing feeding and that day you won't be able to. You have to be Krishna conscious yourself and then you can do. So you have to bring them to yourself being Krishna yes. conscious. By your example, they will yes. become Krishna conscious. But her main question is, or I'm at home serving my kids, yes. or I'm in the temple serving Krishna. And I'm, I think that we can be there thinking about Krishna and we can be here thinking about Him. The child can be taken care of. By proper arrangement, just like as a child grows up to f years of five years, you will send him to Gurukul or you may send him to Ka Karmi school. <coughs> so the same way, in the beginning also, the child can be taken care and the parents can be engaged also in the service. Okay? Is that all right, Mataji? Is that all right? Okay, thank you. That's just my question there. You all don't have any.
There we go. Our regulated principles especially know this is sex life, no meat and no meat eating, no intoxication, are seen by the general public as very, very like impossible austerity to perform. How can we possibly convince the general population of this world that this, this is ecstasy to follow these regulated principles? If you know who you are, then you will act accordingly. First thing, one, one has to come to understand one's natural position. As long as we are on the bodily platform, it's very big austerity to give up. For one who is self-realized and who wants to be self-realized, it's very easy. So that's about it. It's very easy. It's not even an austerity. So how do we inspire them to hanker after self-realization? It is said that you can lead the host to the water, but you cannot make them drink. So you can inspire them, but it's their free choice. It's given free choice by Krishna. Even Krishna gives free choice. Take it or leave it. But Prabhupada wanted us to convince them, even though they're totally against this Krishna consciousness, he wanted us to, to fight, philosophically fight, convince them to come to this point. And how can we do that? By being ourselves purely well situated in Krishna consciousness. Purity is the force, not just words. So what's the secret then for us lusty, angry, greedy, uh, lazy neophytes? How we can get off this ridiculous neophyte platform and actually become advanced in Krishna consciousness? Okay, can I take somebody else's question? If not, then I can end the class. That's a question I want you to answer. <laughs> uh, poor suffering neophytes who are lusty, who are greedy, who are angry, who are lazy, what, what's the secret of how we can actually become advanced devotees? Just follow the spiritual masters who, who are very really well realized and fully well situated. Next. If nobody has question, then we can end. Okay, the Mataji is there. Um, it's just a, a comment to your husband's um, point, how to convince the general public, you know, non-devotees. So I was thinking about the point of um, your regulated principles recently. I was if we don't follow them, we know as devotees we suffer, and most of the population are really suffering because of sinful activities. Uh, they think that we are restricted, you know, that we are, you know, uh, following these principles, it's, you know, such an austerity. But it's explained in the Bhagavad Gita, they're regulated principles of freedom. By following the regulated principles of freedom, um, so there's Godas and Goswami and Godas is explained, isn't it? I think Rupa Goswami explains. Go, Godas means one's a servant of one's senses, but Goswami means he's um, free from control of the senses. So if we convince ourselves, uh, we can hopefully convince others that you know you're suffering because of these abominable activities, you know, meat eating and illicit sex. And you know, if we're convinced of that, then maybe we can have an influence on them. You know, they think we're in prison, but it's them that's imprisoned in, in their own activity. Yes, unless you come to the point that I want to become self-realized, I want to get out of cycle of birth and death, all these regulative principles of freedom, we call it, neither we will awaken our self in that Krishna consciousness, and we will remain on the platform, of material platform. Although we have come to Krishna, we are not understanding 
that how fortunate we are getting this first is human form of life and then by the mercy of Srila Prabhupada and our Vaishnava Acharyas in this succession, we have gotten this mercy and it's so important to get this knowledge within ourselves. We, if we can give up this, there are, these rules and regulations are not only freedom but it's of, to re, get the revealed message within our heart. Unless we come to that point, um, uh, of a uh, point that we want this knowledge to awaken within us. We may read Bhagavad Gita, we may read all the Shastras and everything, but this message will not awaken un until we come to this point of four regulative principles of reveal um, uh, freedom. That is very important. And that's the reason we cannot overcome the material desires. Krishna says this in Bhagavad Gita that uh, this message you can, or Lord Chaitanya also said, this message is not just that you can understand with your uh, material senses. You may read, you may become, one may become very scholarly, one may become. Until this message is revealed within the heart, you won't be able to give up the material sense gratification. So, step by step, we have to give up this material sense gratification. And these are the four pillars, four pillars of sense gratification. Huh? Giving up the sense gratification in or the revealed knowledge. You said, if, let, unless we have the revealed knowledge, we won't be able to give up. Yeah, by seven mukhe hi jiva do, means you have to engage in the austerity of devotional service. I mean, following the regulated yes. principles, then the knowledge is revealed. Yes. Yeah. This is the knowledge. Also, it gives, well, as much as pure you become, one becomes pure, one message is revealed in the heart. then one can take it very easily, becomes Goswamis. Nothing will material will bother them in the Grahastha ashram or in any ashrams. Okay? There are some matijis in the back also. I had a question there. Somebody has raised their hands, they don't have questions. No? They have to put their hands down. <laughs> okay. Hare Krishna Mother, thank you for the nice class. Mm -hmm. uh, it is mentioned that Maharaj Ambarish gave up material desires gradually. How gradually should we give these up? When we take initiation, we make a vow to the spiritual master that from today I will follow the four regulative principles. So there is no question of breaking them at that point. Um, here it's mentioned he gave them up gradually. So. Um, how, how does the process work? Like, we should have a good understanding that unless we give up uh, material desires, we cannot become fully Krishna conscious. So, how can a practitioner practically apply this in their sadhana? So, gradually means we don't go gradually. It will automatically happen, gradually. It takes time, but we have to practice. So why we have a, a practice of four regulative principles before even initiation? And when after we take the initiation, we should at least focus. Even any ordinary person, if they take a vow, they follow. 
So when we have taken the vow, at the, we are promising not only the spiritual master, but to Krishna by offering the grains and saying that we will follow this. And after that we are not able to follow. We are not, you can understand how gradually you want to go. At least that four regulative principles should be followed. And there is a regulations to it. If one wants to have that, then they can go get married and to produce the sanctified child, one can engage in those things. But that means one can think about 25 to 30 years will be gone, a saintly child. So it all depends on one individual, how much they want to do. And raising the kid is very good if we can raise them in Krishna consciousness. But at the same time, we have to preach also because we are not sure may or not many kids become Krishna conscious also. They got, it is wonderful, whatever they did it in, the, in their childhood, they will get the credit for that. But after that, whatever they do, nonsense also when they grow up, for that also they will be responsible. So that means cycle of birth and death goes on. So gradually one has to come to that point that no more, we, unless we endeavor for that, we'll never be able to give up. And we have no guarantee why, how long we're going to live in this material world. Are we going to finish our responsibilities as we think that these are our responsibilities? So one has to take seriously. Is that satisfactory? Yeah, thank you. Sometimes in ISKCON there's an issue about what is the meaning of no illicit sex for the household? <laughs> what does that, that actually that mean? mean? No illicit no sex for your grihasta, what does that mean? How do you strictly follow the principle of your grihasta? Well, it doesn't say no illicit sex. No illicit sex means uh, no recreational sex. If one one child, the Prabhupada has given a formula of Garbhadhan Samskar, 50 rounds, just for the self-procreation. Not only but Prabhupada has said, Bhagavad Gita Krishna says, sex is for procreation and not for recreation. And that sex for procreation is representing Krishna, otherwise not. Not that one partner is uh, wanting, so I have to give in. That means we are not helping him, no, uh, her or he, him. I was wondering, if, well, we hear sometimes also that gradually means also that uh, there are gross sense desires and subtle. So one may be following the four regulative principles, but if inside the heart there is a still desire to enjoy, although he may be following the, the four regulative principles, this means that in subtle way there is a still that desire within the heart. So yes. I understand this is gradually. Yeah, that, gradually, that, that may be there, but if you are engaged, constantly engaged in the devotional service, it will go away. You have no time for thinking about that. You have nothing to do about it. If you are engaged in devotional service as Maharaj Amrish, hands are used for cleaning the temple, legs are going for, uh, from uh, home to the temple, there is no time for thinking about other things. You see? It's not a gradual thing also, it can go away very fast. But if we are sitting somewhere and not engaged in service, then our mind will be, what is that called? Devil's, uh, um, idle, mind is, idle mind is a devil's workshop. So that's what it is. Okay? Is that okay? Okay. All right? We can end the class here. You have a question there, Mataji? I don't know. Okay.
Okay, I think it's not, not everybody is done. I think everybody is done. Grantra Shimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Shila Prabhupada ki jai, Gora Premananda.